There's no one here. I told you I could get you in. chance Mrs. Collins isn't at home. She's here. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone else. Especially Nathan. I don't tell him anything. Daniel, I, I don't want you ever to, to be alone with him. I don't want you ever to spend any time with him, ever. I know that's hard for you to understand, but I understand. Everyone's asleep now anyway. No. There's lights in the foyer. I hope that Nathan was out hunting for you. Well, I'll go get my cousin. She'll be in her room. And after I leave, knock, lock the door, and I'll come back and knock three times. What's the matter? I didn't realize how long Peter had been away. Well, I'll get my cousin. Daniel, it's not true. I know it isn't. Don't go to her now. Why? Miss Winters. I've brought her back. Where is she? In the study. done enough for me. Victoria, I told Mr. Bradford to bring you here. You did? When? Oh, at least two hours ago. Why? Didn't he reach you? Well, I, I'm sure he's all right. I know he's been caught. Nonsense. I've got to leave here before I, I get you into more trouble, trouble you don't even know about. You will not leave here. You will stay. Mr. Bradford will come back, I'm sure. And when he does, we can hide him, too. And when Mr. Collins returns from Boston, we'll get you both on the first ship that gets away from here. Now, young man, you kindly explain why you ran away. I didn't run away. Not at all. No, he didn't. There was this man who jumped out of the bushes and grabbed me. I was on my way to the old house. He, he took me to the fishing shack. Do you know who he was? No. He was talking about a boat that we were going to go on. He had a rope. He was going to tie me up. Oh, Daniel. But Daniel got away. He knew where I was and he ran to me. But Mrs. Collins, a terrible thing happened. Millicent? That's Nathan. He mustn't find me. No. What do you want? Daniel! What do you want, Lieutenant? I want to speak with Daniel. Is he there? He, he's very tired. Well, it won't take long. Well, the morning would be better. Mrs. Collins, I have some rights. I am the boy's brother-in-law. Yes, he is, Cousin Naomi. He has more rights than you. Why can we not see my brother? Don't worry. I'll be with you. Cousin. Well, Daniel, my boy, very glad to see you back. Are you? Well, of course I am. What kind of a question is that? I should like to hear everything that's happened to you and where you've been, although I suspect he's probably already told you. Not enough for me to understand. Oh? I'd like to talk to him alone. Melissa, why don't you and your cousin... Yes, of course, Nathan. Are you coming, cousin? Not just yet, thank you, Millicent. What did he tell you? A man grabbed him and took him to a deserted shack. Oh, not Daniel. You have quite an imagination, don't you? It's true, he did. Oh, and why did he do it? He, he wanted to kill me. He tried to kill me. Daniel. Don't waste your sympathy, Mrs. Collins. 
he caught me in the graveyard. He he was strangling me, and and only uh, only only what? You fought him off and got away? Yes, I I made up quite a few stories like that when I was your age. He was thin and he had reddish hair, and he was taller than I, but not Please, that Daniel, tall. Daniel, don't describe this mythical man to us. He had a scar on his face. A scar? And I suppose he had a peg leg too, and a hook where his hand should have been. He was dressed like a sailor. Lieutenant Forbes, Daniel has just described that friend of yours. Friend of mine? That man that was here earlier, in the drawing room. All right, then. I shall tell you why I know that Daniel is lying. The man who was here earlier, Gifford, is no friend of mine. But I sincerely regret his having come to this house tonight. He's dead as a result of it. Dead? Yes, I was out hunting for Daniel, and I discovered him in the graveyard. He'd been shot. You must go to the authorities. I have taken the murderer to them already. You saw it happen? Yes. You couldn't stop it? No. Well, why was he killed? Because he had stumbled upon the witch. The murderer is Peter Bradford. Unless the witch is found quickly, Bradford will hang before she does. sure that Daniel was in bed and the lieutenant was in his room. He lied. Who? Lieutenant Forbes, his story was a lie. Oh, you're so tired, Victoria. We'll settle all this in the morning. No, I have to go into the village. Peter didn't kill that man. Lieutenant Forbes was lying. How do you know? Because I killed him. I don't believe you. I wish it weren't true. I, I wish I never had to think it again or say it again. Are you protecting Mr. Bradford? No. I was in the mausoleum. David, Daniel, ran out to get help, and, and, and suddenly I heard a scream. I ran out into the graveyard, and there was a man who had his hands around Daniel's throat. He was strangling him. I, I knew I had to do something. So I aimed the gun, as Peter had shown me, and pulled the trigger. He fell. You had to do it. What else could you do? Thank you. For saving da D Daniel. But I won't let you give yourself up. And I won't let Peter die. He's lied about Peter just the way he lied at my trial, and he'll get him convicted too. Why is he doing this to Peter? Why? I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out. How? Mr. Collins will be home tomorrow. He'll know what to do. And now, you're going to sleep in my room where you'll be safe. You'll be as safe as anyone in this house. I'll go first. You follow. Managed to get some rest? Yes, a little. How does your arm feel? Not much better. Mrs. Collins, did something happen outside? Outside? I was trying to sleep and I heard someone scream. It seemed to come from the woods. Oh, oh it was Millicent. What happened to her? Nothing. She was taking a walk and she thought she saw a strange man, but there was no one there. I came to tell you that Mr. Collins is back. Does he know that I'm here? Yes, and he said you could probably leave sometime tomorrow. 
He's going to arrange about a boat the first thing in the morning. Will he be able to get Peter out of jail? He's going to do his best. But he's not sure that he can. Well, he can't be sure until he talks to the authorities in the, fir in the first thing in the morning. But then I, I, I don't want any arrangements made until he does talk to them. Victoria. I'm sorry, Mrs. Collins. I'm very grateful for all you're doing for me. But I can't live without Peter. And I can't let him be punished for something that I've done. Are you in love with Peter Bradford? Yes, I am. Well, you're good people. And if at all possible, you can leave here tomorrow and make a new life together someplace far away from Collinsport. I know that Mr. Collins will do his best. Now I must go upstairs. Mrs. Collins. Yes? I had the feeling that you were saying goodbye to me. No. Only good night. Something has happened to you since I spoke to you this afternoon. What is it? Nothing. Yes. Something has happened. Something has affected you very deeply. Please tell me what it is. Victoria, you mustn't concern yourself with the present. You belong to the future and it to you. Be happy in it. And forget everything that's happened here at Collins. Mrs. Collins. very careful tonight. She must have had a lot of other things on her mind. What other things? Oh, nothing that would interest you. I heard part of your conversation with her. Your feelings about Mr. Bradford were very touching. I can do without your sarcasm, Lieutenant. What are you planning to do with me? I'm going to take you into Collinsport, turn you over to the local authorities. Would you answer one question for me first? What is it? I never did anything to hurt you. I never said one unkind thing about you. Why did you testify against me? And why are you doing this to me now? You don't really expect me to answer that, do you? Oh, yes, I do. It's my life you're going to take, and I think I should know why. What could you possibly gain from testifying against me? Let's put it this way. I would have had a great deal to lose by testifying for you. I don't understand. I don't suppose there's any harm in your knowing it now. You see, I'd lost Millicent. I wanted to get her back. Mr. Trask promised to help me if I would help him. But you did get her back, and you married her, so why are you still against me? Well, to be brutally frank, Miss Winters, there's a price on your head, and I want to collect it. Oh, I see. You didn't get your hands on enough money when you married Millicent. I didn't get my hands on any. She signed over all of her money to Daniel. And now Naomi has sent Daniel away. So you see, I... The fact is, I have nothing. But you were going to murder Daniel. I think we'd better be going. Well, there's something you must know. There's no time to talk anymore. It's about that man that you sent to kidnap Daniel. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, you go ahead and deny it. But there's something you have to know. Peter didn't shoot him. I did. You? Yes. If, if I hadn't, he would have killed Daniel. I had no choice. You're going to remain valiant to the end, aren't you? What do you mean? You don't really expect me to believe one word of what you just said, do you? It's the truth. It's nonsense. Pure emotional nonsense. Why would I lie? For a very simple reason. You've already been condemned. You're going to die. Now, you're in love with Bradford, and this is your way of saving him from the gallows. Please, Lieutenant, I am telling you the truth. Well, you can tell it to the authorities, but I don't think they'll believe you either. 
Why? Because you'll lie again and tell him you saw Peter do it. Oh, I don't think it's going to be necessary for me to lie this time. Come on. Stay in front of me. Don't make a sound. Turn left as you go out the door. We're leaving through the servants' quarters. that I wanted to see you. Can we be alone? Yes, until it's time for us to come for her. To take me to the gallows? How much time do we have? Five minutes. Five minutes? Peter! <laughs> Nothing must happen to you. Oh, Peter, you've got to convince them that I was the one that killed Noah Gifford. You've got to. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. I tried to make them believe me. I tried to tell them, but they wouldn't listen. Peter, Peter, you can't die for something that I did. You can't. Stop. Stop talking about dying and stop thinking about it. Peter. Vicki, we have so little time. There's so many things I want to say to you. So many things I want to know. What things? Oh, I want to know everything about you. I want to know what you were like when you were a little girl. I don't know where to begin. You can begin anywhere. What's your favorite flower? What kind of music do you like? Your favorite color? What's the best book you ever read? And, and what's the happiest time you ever had in your life? Come on, tell me. I don't know which question to answer first. You don't have to answer. So good to see you smile. Peter, I want to know all those things about you, too. We've had so little time together, so little time to get to know each other. I know I love you. And I love you. That's the first time you've ever said that. I was afraid. You're not afraid now. Not now. They're coming for me. Vicki, listen to me. And somehow you manage to travel through time and find me. And somehow, no matter what happens, I'll find you. Peter. Listen. I'll find you. Just remember that. to come with me now.
You want a mask? Remember, Vicky. Remember, somehow I'll find you again. No matter what happens now, I'll find you. Remember what I'm saying. Remember. Remember.